Hi, I'm Peter Alsop, and our song to chew this week comes from my Take Me With You album. It's called It's No Fun When You Gotta Eat an Onion. Some people like onions, some do not. Many times our individual taste differences are tailored by what we've learned to eat with our families when we were little. It often depends on how we think about the food we eat. If we associate certain foods with comfort and good times, we look forward to having those experiences of chewing and savoring the taste of foods that reminds us of those pleasant times. It's the stories about our food that set us up for how we behave around our eating habits. We might not like a story about eating unformed chicken embryos or common fungus or sour milk solids, so we tell ourselves a much more pleasant story when we sit down to eat our mushroom and cheese omelet, right? We can talk about our stories in a bit, but for now, let's listen to our song to chew for today from my Take Me With You album, It's No Fun When You Gotta Eat an Onion. It's no fun when you gotta eat an onion. It's no fun when you gotta eat an onion. When dad cuts onions, he just cries. That smell brings tears into his eyes. It brings the tears to my eyes, too. I know he'll make me eat his stew. And it's no fun when you gotta eat an onion. It's When I take a bite of something that I think's all right, I find some onion in my mouth, and Mom won't let me spit it out. She said it's just a small piece, so don't you fuss. But it will burn if it gets crushed. I chew around it, but I'm stuck. I guess I'll have to swallow. Yuck! Well, it's no fun. It's no fun when you gotta eat an onion Now onion lovers love to tell How much they love that onion smell How onions make your blood run thinner If you eat them in your dinner Well I don't care what someone thinks If you eat onions your breath stinks and you might cause your best friend's death if you say hi with onion breath oh it's no fun when you gotta eat an onion it's no fun when you gotta eat an onion onions raw or onions cooked or onions tossed or sauced or cooked with batter fried or onions plain Or onions baked with fancy names Yeah, like walk rotten or fondue Or onions hidden in my stew With eggs or cheese in a souffle They're still just onions anyway And it's no fun when you gotta eat an onion It's no fun when you gotta eat an onion So kids, remember when you eat, check each mouthful I repeat, cause onions are a grown-up plot, some kids like onions, I do not. It's no fun when you gotta eat an onion, it's no fun when you gotta eat an There are so many people with food issues caused by feeding time practices we learn from our families, especially if they are emotionally laden with stress. Many of us grew up hearing about table manners, sit up straight, but I hate spinach. Any of that sound familiar? How we felt and how we were treated during our eating times can create the tone of our relationship with our food for the rest of our lives. And maybe our family meals were wonderful and sweet and they influenced our food stories with wonderful sweetness. We carry all sorts of stories around with us. 
They don't have to be traumatic to get locked into us, but because our eating times are so important to us growing up, if they were stressful, those stories can pop up and close us down in a split second. And the way food tastes, smells, or looks can trigger us right back to some of the stressful early childhood experiences we had around mealtimes. Some of us were subjected to being discounted. Don't tell me you don't like onions. Of course you like onions. Everyone in our family loves onions. Being punished. Eat it all or you will go to your room. Having rewards withheld. Then you'll get no dessert. Being controlled and having to negotiate. You eat that up and then maybe you can have more french fries. Being guilted. Your mother worked all day slaving over a hot stove to make this food for you. Or being shamed. There are little children starving all over the world right this minute. You don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> if we take a look at our feeding time food issues and our history, we can usually see and understand where our issues come from. That awareness is the first step to take if we want to change those stories and make sure we don't inadvertently pass them on to our own kids. Sometimes well-meaning grown-ups will bend the truth and trick their children into trying new foods for their own good. This is almost always counterproductive. If we agree that the best thing we can do for our kids is to provide a safe place for them to experiment and learn about themselves and their food preferences, then we must not trick, tease, cajole, lie, or use pressure techniques because that will deteriorate our children's trust in us and make them suspicious and guarded, not only about food, but also about us and their entire approach to life. So what are our options? There are lots of kids who say they don't like vegetables, but when those same kids learn to grow and harvest and taste fresh vegetables right out of their garden, they love eating them. It also engages them when we all get together and prepare the food we eat. Us humans are omnivores. We can eat a wide variety of different kinds of foods to survive and thrive. Unlike other species who have to eat certain kinds of foods to live, our ability to eat and digest many different things creates a dilemma for us. Over thousands of years, we have developed within us the desire to taste and eat unfamiliar things. Who knew that a clam might be something we would want to put in our mouth? We need to try things to see if they're all right to eat. There's a wonderful book by Michael Pollan called The Omnivore's Dilemma you might want to check out. The more we learn to value the different attitudes and stories we have about our food, the more we can appreciate the importance of diversity in the range and variations of human behaviors and practices, not only about our foods, but about oh so many things. Our wide range of diversities is what makes our lives so full and rich and interesting. Here are a few exercises I've used to help kids and families gain a bit more clarity about food likes and dislikes. Check with four different people about what foods they most like to eat and why. What about foods they don't like to eat? Were they forced to eat those foods when they were children? Ask how long it's been since they tried or tasted some new food. Try taking a big bite of a raw onion, chew it up, and hold it in your mouth as long as you can. Then ask yourself, why in the world did I do that? <laughs> that particular exercise is mostly for kids five and over, because most of them know better than to try that. And my favorite part is when we suggest it to them, they give us that look, the same one I love when I tell a bad dad joke. It usually comes with a big eye roll. Really, dad? Okay, it's more than enough for us to chew on today. I'm Peter Alsop, and I'll be back next week with another song to chew. Please subscribe or follow this podcast and let your friends and family know about these little musical life lessons. Hopefully they'll thank you for it. Bye for now.